the concept of partial differentiation is to be explained here um, the name is as per its properties and uh, we know that part is something which is a component of something and partial differentiation will be a kind of differentiation in which there will be components so this is the intuitive um, reaction of ours once we look at this heading that is the partial differentiation so in this situation usually we have uh, more than one independent variables and let us assume that we have a certain number of independent variables let us call this number n and if I try to write this in terms of a general function it will look something like this that y is equal is equal to that is a function of x1 x2 x3 and other variables up till a certain number of variables that is x n so we can general we have generalized it and we can make it specific to any situation partial differentiation is suitable in such a situation because there are a number of variables that are causing changes in y so there are a number of parts that we need to include and see the overall effect on y here the purpose is not to calculate the sum of the effects here the purpose is simply to change the effects of different variables separately that is in parts so this is why we call it partial differentiation and uh, the notation that we use for it is delta we use delta which is uh, used instead of d because if we use dx over d, uh, d over dx it is not going to tell us the distinction between the ordinary derivative that we have been using and definitely the partial derivative using this enables us to uh, specify the partial derivative in a different way um, so this is uh, the number of derivatives that we can calculate from this given general function the first derivative would be with respect to the first independent variable and the second derivative will be with respect to the second independent variable and then similarly third independent variable and finally the last independent variable a finding that I can generalize here is that the number of partial derivatives they are equal to the number of independent variables I had n variables in it and I have n derivatives in it so this is a kind of formula that I can develop or a pattern that will exist in the uh, partial derivatives now we can understand it in a better way if we take a numerical instance and solve it so let us see that how a numerical can be done so let's scroll and let's see this example precisely this is partial differentiation and a numerical example of it um, this is the given function as you can see now y is not just dependent on one independent variable rather two of them one of them is x1 and the other one is x2 so we have to find the effect of x1 on y as well as the effect of x2 on y separately so we differentiate this given function with respect to x1 where the function is equal to this this is a given uh, information and if we take the derivative with respect to x1 it is suitable to put a bar on x2 because we know that x2 is now considered as a because now we consider that x2 is now considered as an so you can see x2 is now considered a constant variable at this stage temporarily actually x2 is a variable but for the time being we are assuming that it is constant 
so that we could single out the effect of x1 on y. So um, let us see the notation is put on the right hand side as well and the function remains as it is. Now it is time to solve it and you can see there are pluses right. So it calls for the sum rule and there are powers. So it means that there will be power rule as well. So by using these two rules and any other rule if it is applicable which is understood at this stage uh, we will find out the answers. The only thing which is new here is this um, symbol which is now not d rather it is delta and uh, the treatment of the other independent variable. x2 is here in this final term. So all of this term will reduce to 0 and the reason is simple that 4 is a constant it will be brought outside the derivative x2 is considered constant so it is also brought out the derivative and the derivative will be left with only 1 because if we multiply this term with 1 it will not make any difference. So by writing 1 we fulfill the formality of differentiating the remaining term which will be 0 because 1 is a constant and its derivative will be 0. So this 0 will convert the rest of the term into 0. So it is a detailed procedure of how this x2 will be treated. Now in the first term let me jump to the first term and I will talk about the middle term uh, after I explain the first term. For the first term is being dealt with in a very usual way. The first term is being dealt with in a very usual way. As you can see 3 comes out as a coefficient and the remaining term is differentiated by using the power rule which I hope you can easily do. Power rule it is a DIY for you do it yourself and then the middle term is to be considered here you can see that x2 and x1 are being multiplied, x2 is considered as a constant so it comes out of the derivative and the derivative is, derivative is of x1 which will be 1 so finally the answer is x2. So now we uh, simplify the whole thing and we get this answer. This is the answer of the derivative of function y with respect to x1 where we have kept x2 as a constant here we have removed this bar just to show that now there is no need to specify this thing because now we have another function and derivative has been taken and its effect has been uh, shown in the previous steps. Now definitely the next thing would be the derivative with respect to x2 of the same function that is y. So here we have done it and it is uh, quite similar to what we have done before. So let us see um, here x1 is put with a bar and uh, the function is the same but this time it is being differentiated with respect to x2 and uh, this time this term will reduce to 0 because it contains x1 which is considered a constant uh, in this situation where x2 is the variable um, term. So the middle term will reduce to x1, the final term will be differentiated in a suitable way because x2 is the variable term in this case and finally the answer will reduce to this term which is the derivative of y or function f with respect to x2. So you see we had two independent variables and we have two derivatives. So this is the property that we developed and we can see it is getting verified. So this is the basic concept of partial derivatives and how we can do them numerically once if we are given a function which has more than one independent variables. In this case they were x1 and x2. Definitely you can generalize this to any number of independent variables let us say xn. Thank you.